Uh, Matt Hearn, our WA, Wake Up WA Money Mentor, is in with us again this morning. We've been learning about three C's and how to crack the whip and keep an eye on your savings and make sure you've got some cash flow. What are we yep. talking about today? Well, today we, I have been, I'm sure everyone at home, Jason, have you been implementing the three C's? I have. Some of them. I've got some money now, I've, I've got some savings, I want to invest it and I want it to actually work the best it possibly can. I don't know how. So, Matt, you're going to help me. Um, will teach me and, and the viewers to actually invest your money so it actually can work the best for you and you can make more and more money and more and more money and become rich. Absolutely, Anita. That's <laughs> exactly what we're going to do. Hopefully. Cross your fingers. Yeah. You have to. So first of all, what, is, what are the criteria for choosing the best investment? Yeah, but that's probably the next question in your mind. How do I choose mm. my next investment? And really, it's good to start thinking about your criteria first because you might, in your mind, say investing equals shares, but maybe that's not the case. So the three criteria you need to think of is first, what is the purpose for that money that you've saved? The next question that drops out of that is what is the time frame until you want to spend that money? Is it a long term time frame, medium or short term for example? And the third criteria after that is what's your tolerance of risk and that's very an emotional what thing. What if you've got a few purposes like you know you've got you've only got this amount of money but it doesn't quite cover the purpose that you want <laughs> but you've got it in mind. Is there a way of working around that Very good that question Anita. Because that happens all the time. Yes. Do you have to have less purposes or more It's money? like yes I've saved some money, I've got some money oh, but then I've got to buy this, 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 this and this and it's just not going to cover it. It's probably what Jason said, unfortunately. It's the <laughs> trade-off. It's between you need to perhaps limit your purposes but potentially okay. or limit the quality of the purpose. Right. And then so, that, so the purpose, obviously, I mean, everyone's, that's, that's pretty easy then. What, what about the emotional aspect to that, mm. to your investment? Is that meaning that you need to, you know, uh, get onto something? Oh, sorry, I'm looking at the time frame. You're talking about yeah, emotional Yeah, but they'll risk, interact. But from a time frame point of view then, so should you have different investments for different time frames or should you have one investment pool and then decide how long you're going to leave it in there for? Both work and that really depends upon uh, a couple of things. One, your emotional tolerance and one, your ability to do mental accounting. If you have one pool, then you need to know that subsets of that pool can't be touched. If you don't have that level of discipline to not touch money that's sitting there, like if you've got 100, if you're the type of person who's got $100 in your wallet and you spend it because it's in your wallet, then perhaps you can't handle the one pool method and you therefore need multiple pools of money. So that, that's why it's very much, there's no one right answer to where do I invest and to get the best investment it's very much a personal thing and that's why the purpose really you, you put your purpose aside and that informs both the time frame um, and the emotional tolerance of risk as well so from a time frame perspective if this money that you've saved up and it dutifully is for a home deposit that you want to buy for your very first house in the next two years and that's a short-term time frame mm -hmm. but if it's really savings for your ultimate retirement when you say 40 or 50 or 60 or wherever it is, that's a long term, or 30, which Jason and I passed, but you know, you've still got that opportunity. You're not supposed to tell our viewers that, they all think I'm 25. <laughs> well, my grey hairs give it away. But, <laughs> my missing hair gives it away. if it's a long term wealth creation, then you've got more time frame. Now, the reason time frame is so relevant is because that some investments have a fluctuating return on them. So what you need is time to ride out the fluctuations so that you get the average return overall. If you don't have that time on your side, then you need to go to something that that fluctuates less. And fluctuation is also known as a volatility, if you've heard of that before. No, no, I didn't. And that's hear the about relevance that. of time frame. Right. Okay. So, what about um, risk tolerance then? What is that? That is really a measure of your emotional state. Okay. So, how so do it's we a very that? emotional. It's a because you. you you can measure it from, psychologists have tests and stuff for measuring and I, you know, and I work with my clients for it, but that's how you measure it. But you can get a gauge of it yourself, is that if you walk past, to use a metaphor, if you walk past a, a roller coaster and you're petrified and won't get on the roller coaster, that's an indication that you're a bit of a pussycat when it comes to risk. If you walk past and you go, give me that white knuckle ride, you're perhaps more of a tiger. And so that's, oh, okay. yeah, just to use it. I yeah. love metaphors, you know. <laughs> so that's really what it's about. It's like how nervous do you get when you see the fluctuations in your investment return? <laughs> that's an indication of your that's emotional state. And that's why we talk about getting more aggressive in previous, like cracking the whip. That's what you do. You, you manage your emotional state to build up your emotional pool to, to handle the white knuckle ride, so to speak. I've got a very good friend of mine who's a lovely, lovely man, and he uh, came into a little bit of money, and he's got a lot of investments out there, but can't help himself. He has to check them like five, ten times a day, and then he'll be like, oh, I've just made 30 grand. Oh, I've just lost 150 grand. Oh, I've just made 200 grand. So that in itself so you can actually manage your uh, emotional risk factors or your emotional tolerance factors by sort of training yourself to leave things alone for a little while? Well see that would be one way in that scenario that he, he might not be able to improve his emotional tolerance but he could stop 
impinging on his quality of life, for example, and enjoy the money that he's, he's come into by not checking it on a daily basis. But the reality is, you check something if you're about to acquire some information from which you're about to make a decision. If you're not likely to make a decision, don't bother acquiring the information, don't bother uh, checking it. You're just wasting your time. Go and enjoy life, play with the kids, mm. something okay. like that. All right, so we've applied um, purpose, time frame yeah. and emotional risk tolerance, mm -hmm. okay? We've, we've done all of that. Yeah. What do we do next? Well, maybe I should just give some examples to tie, tie that down. Mm -hmm. Is The reality is if the purpose indicates that it's short term, maybe for your first home, yes. Anita, and therefore you've, you don't really want to go through the fluctuations. So when you say short term, you mean you're investing one or for two a deposit? Years. Yes. Yeah, because okay. you're going to use the just money like in one or two thing, years. Can, the short term thing is to save up for a house. You're saving yeah. up for a deposit for a house. Okay. Deposit for the house, absolutely. <laughs> so it's one to two years before you want to spend that money, and that's the mm -hmm. time frame. Then that indicates you're perhaps, irrespective of your tolerance of risk, you haven't got time for the fluctuations, mm -hmm. so you go to a lower volatile thing. So that's really how the, the, the link in. The next step um, leading from your question is, well, do you want to do it yourself? And this really goes back to what we spoke about last week, about whether mm -hmm. you go fully active and do it all yourself, mm -hmm. or do you fully outsource or somewhere in between. Mm -hmm. The easiest step is obviously to fully outsource and go passive. So let's oh. say, for example, the other to your example, you've got plenty of time on your side because this pool of money is for your long-term wealth creation for the ultimate point of retirement, 10, 15, 20 years away. So therefore you can ride out the fluctuations. Then what you might do is to say, well, I want to go in the share market because I want the higher return I'm willing to ride it out. What's the most easy way to do that is just to get the average return of the share market. The way to do that is go into a managed fund that invests in the market index. That's the mm. passive approach. Yes. And that's the easiest next step. If you want to go something different to that, then you apply what we talked about last week and, and maybe acquire the knowledge to choose shares that would be different to the market index, but you first got to acquire that knowledge. So go back to the triangle. I love the way it all works back together. It's, mm -hmm. uh, if you notice, I use threes all the time. You do. You like your yeah. triangles, don't threes you? Threes are your lucky number. <laughs> well, threes, threes work really well. Number. It's really no. easy to understand, yeah. and usually there's three criteria that things can be broken down into. Three steps in bite-sized chunks. There you go. Bite-sized chunks of money matters. That's Matt Hearn, our, our, mm. our, our money guru. You have